37%. That's the graduation rate at Hempstead High School in Long Island's Nassau County, one of the lowest graduation rates in the country. Despite hundreds of millions of dollars spent each year, the Hempstead School District has been underperforming for decades. But why? That was the focus of a year-long investigation by CBS2 reporter Carolyn Gussoff, who has been covering the Hempstead School District for years. Last fall, Gussoff decided to go behind the scenes as a new superintendent was brought in to turn things around. What followed was a year of chaos, power struggles, and lawsuits that resulted in a sad and shocking document of dysfunction at the highest levels. Here's a look. A new school year and a new start in Hempstead, Long Island. I want to welcome everyone back. Welcome back. Where teachers and staff gathered to meet their newly hired superintendent, Dr. Shimon Warrenker. A deeply religious educator with a record of turning around urban schools brought in to transform a deeply troubled suburban public school system, one of the worst performing in America. Opponents rallied against his selection before he even got started. The kids in Hempstead had been suffering for decades. And I've had experience in turning around schools in school communities and a very successful experience and I think I could make a difference. Como esta señora? Buenos dias. He also came to Hempstead with a not-so-secret weapon in a district where more than a third of the 8,000 students are just learning to speak English. Shimon Warren, ¿cómo están? No puedo darle la mano solo a los hombres. Born in Chile, Warrenker's native language is Spanish. So I've got two rules. You know what the first rule is? No? Do whatever will make your parents proud. Hagan lo que van a hacer a sus padres orgullosos. Okay? Rule number two. Don't do what will not make them proud. His plan was to make a plan, a four-year strategy. The only way we can come up with a plan of action is if we listen to the community and hear what teachers, parents, students are saying about the school and the school's district. And this way we get the information so that we can make an, an analysis, create priorities, and create a strategic plan. Beginning with a personal inspection of every school. When I came to do, to do a visit, they had all sorts of garbage on top of the lockers. How many superintendents had actually walked the buildings and inspected the classrooms, the toilets, faucets, everything? He said, none, you're the first one. Five months into Superintendent Warrenker's contract, the balance on the board shifted yet again, with New York State's Commissioner of Education reinstating ousted trustee Lamont Johnson, who she ruled was denied due process. The new majority was now stacked three to two against Dr. Warren Kerr. I know for a fact the so-called majority of the board are for the children. We're putting the children first. That's our main objective for the students to do well in the Hempstead School District. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Gates? Yes. Trustee Stitt? Yes. In their first order of business... Resolved, effective immediately, the law firm of Razor and Kniff PC is hereby terminated from representing the Hempstead Junior Free School District. The law firm Warren Kerr had asked to investigate suspected fraud in the district's food services. Why was that important to do so quickly and do it all? I have no comment on that. Also terminated, the contract with Warren Kerr's New American Initiative and his planning blasted as too slow. You had June, July, August to have a plan for the children. You make over $250,000 a year. We don't need you to call in all your cronies, Randy Weimer. She don't get paid here. She don't work here. We're not interested in her solution. We need a plan from you. You've done nothing since you've been here. Also fired days before Christmas, his four master teachers. And joining us now is CBS2 reporter Carolyn Gussoff. Carolyn, welcome to the program. Thank you. So, Carolyn, you know, the Hampstead School District spends more money per pupil 
than just about any other school district in the nation. Yet, as I said in the introduction, uh, graduation rates in its high school has been among the lowest for decades. That's 37 percent right. as of the most recent count. Yes. Give us a little background. How did we get here? Well, it certainly didn't happen overnight. Uh, I've been covering the Hempstead School District for decades. And, you know, as long ago as the early 90s, their uh, graduation rates were under 50 percent. Uh, there's been a history of, of dysfunction, of a revolving door of administrators. There's been something like uh, 20 assistant superintendents for business over 21 years. There have been uh, multiple principals and superintendents hired and fired and rehired, infighting, uh, dysfunction, and alleged mismanagement. Uh, so this has been going on for years. And uh, there's been state oversight, but plans have been made but never implemented. Yeah. You know, somebody described it as like consistent inconsistencies. Yeah. The state's been in there with audits yeah. in 2004 and 2014. A whole team of state educators came in in 2004 and put out a scathing report, and yet none That's of the silly. plans have been and, implemented. And, and, we'll, and we'll get into all that. We'll get into all that. Uh, no, but in the documentary, as you show it, the school board with a one vote majority in order to fix it now, they hired as a superintendent uh, Shimon Orenker, right? Correct, yes. He's a PhD, has a PhD from Harvard, has the reputation of turning problematic schools around. Uh, but not everybody was on board. Uh, who was the opposition and what was the outcome of that opposition? Right. Well, it, it's what interested us, because after watching uh, the dysfunction and the problems and the very low graduation rates for decades, we finally uh, saw this uh, person come in after a nationwide search and thought uh, this, you know, we should follow his progress. He was he signed a four year contract and we thought, well, watch this for four years. Let's see if he can do it. You know, is it mission impossible? Mm -hmm. uh, but there was opposition, and that was very curious to me. Why wouldn't you welcome change if, when clearly it's needed? But the opposition was almost immediate, really before he even uh, yeah. started. And vicious. <laughs> vicious <laughs> and uh, terrible infighting. And there, there was a rally even before he, he came up on board. And the opposition in this uh, bitterly, di deeply divided school board uh, felt that they were left out of the process of hiring him. And then as he continued on with uh, his, his work, the opposition grew, and it became that he had a conflict of interest in bringing in his own. That's what they were charging. Educational yeah. foundation, and with each passing week and and month, there were more allegations of him doing uh, more uh, planning that they deemed inappropriate, bringing in master teachers that he said were required to turn the yeah. district around. So there were oppositions out beyond the board, too. I mean, there was a group called Hempstead. There is a group called Hempstead for Hempstead. It's run by a guy named Thomas Parsley. Tell us about Thomas Parsley. Right. Well, this grassroots group uh, formed at, right around the time that uh, Warren Kerr was hired. They named themselves Hempstead for Hempstead. And uh, the self-proclaimed founder, Thomas Parsley, we discovered in the documentary, is a registered sex offender. Uh, he was convicted, and uh, he, despite being registered on the New York State Sex Offender Registry, he, d he regularly attends school board meetings and is a very vocal uh, member of the audience. He's a former school board member who was accused years ago of uh, using a district credit card for his personal use. Those charges were dismissed. He was removed from the school board. He was replaced, uh, but clearly has a great yes. interest in, in having mm -hmm. his voice heard. And we also discovered in the documentary uh, that he has a criminal record in addition to yes. being a sex offender. And, and people know this, yet he's still their leader and they, they follow him. You know, you talked about the, the role of the state, that they brought in what is called a distinguished educator, basically a guy who sat on the board meetings and followed this all the time that you were, you were shooting, uh, uh, monitoring the events watching as this dysfunction was going on. Talk about the responsibility of the state for the dysfunction that's happening, and what could they do that they haven't done? You know, the state's involvement in Hempstead goes back decades, and I can't say that they have a terrific uh, track record because of failure to follow up yeah. on, you know, reports and, and audits. 
Uh, now, you know, since 2015, the state has a more official response to persistently struggling schools. So first they put a school on a re on receivership. It's called receivership. Hempstead is considered persistently struggling. Next, if it doesn't pull itself out, which Hempstead had not, they assign a distinguished educator. And that's, that's where what, Hempstead yeah. is now. So this Jack, Dr. Jack Beerwith, he's a former superintendent right. elsewhere, has been assigned. He's the eyes and ears of the state, and his job is to report to the But he reports, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not perhaps not being objective myself, but he's sitting there throughout this, this function. He's reporting, but nothing is changing. Well, it's, you know, it's disturbing to watch the documentary and see him sitting there and not intervening as the public, you know, there's name calling, there's shouting. Yeah. How does anybody get anything done yeah. in a chaotic atmosphere? Yeah. But I have since interviewed Dr. Jack Beerworth, and his answer to that is, you know, I'm not here, I, I deal with the board that I'm given. You know, I'm not here right. to pass judgment on the board. Right. I'm here for the kids. So what's the situation now and where is it heading, do you think? Uh, it's going to be very interesting in the coming months. Uh, it's going to be played out possibly in, in public. The board is trying to, uh, has brought dismissal charges against Shimon Warrenker. That could be a public hearing. They're accusing him of 41 counts of m gross misconduct. Yeah. And, uh, and the state continues to monitor this all and you know, says they're making yeah. progress. It could take five to ten yeah. years, predicts five the to state, to years. turn in the meantime, this 37 the kids, percent the kids graduation no rate around. Yeah, it's a sad story, but it's a wonderful documentary, really powerful. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you so much for making it. 37 percent, the documentary we were talking about, airs on Sunday, September 2nd at 12 p.m. on CBS 2.